Across the Fence. I'm Jolay Whitney. Every piece of your technology that you interact with on a daily basis uses a semiconductor. Think of them as the brains of modern electronics. The University of Vermont has recently partnered with Global Foundries to establish two labs at UVM to study and build these essential components of our modern lives. In this video, produced by the University of Vermont, we learn the importance of this technology and this important connection between the industry and the academy. The Department of Education provided $2.6 million to start a lab and uh, establish a certificate program in the area of semiconductors. UVM and Global Foundries have established a partnership. This partnership has enabled us to develop two labs. One is we're calling the characterization lab where they'll be able to look at existing chips and characterize films. And the other piece of it is the clean room where they can do fabrication or actually start building things. UVM has acquired quite a bit of equipment and we're rolling it out this semester in front of the students. At the same time, Global Foundries now has uh, access to people who are trained in the industry and on the tools that they actually provided. So it's a, a technical and also an interpersonal relationship that we have going as a result of this collaboration. The chips and the wafers that we look at in this class um, are silicon materials that contain hundreds, thousands, millions of transistors. Transistors were really what transformed the world of electrical engineering. We wouldn't be having this conversation, wouldn't be making this video, and our lives would be entirely different. So the introduction to that, for me, it was inspiring. It's kind of unusual for undergraduate students to be able to get their hands on state-of-the-art probers and uh, parameter analyzers, instruments that would normally be found in a research laboratory. And we're opening up these resources to undergraduate students. When they offered this uh, program, I was extremely excited. So I switched my entire schedule around and kind of fed it into it because I know taking these classes would allow me to be more experienced and be ready for when I go into the industry. After my last internship as an equipment engineering, I received a full-time offer to go work at Global Foundries. Current effort you know, nationally to invest in semiconductors is geared towards the United States maintaining a leadership role in dictating where these technologies go. I'm joined in studio today by Matt Gallagher, who is the director of semi, the semiconductor, excuse me, semiconductor curriculum at um, UVM, and Linda Shadler, the dean of colleges and engineering, mathematics and science. Excuse me, I think I butchered your title there. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you so much for joining me today. Good to be here. And so you have this new lab at UVM. How does that put you in compared to other universities? Are you on par? Does it put you a little ahead of the curve? It puts us ahead of the curve of most universities. Uh, the College of Engineering and Mathematical Sciences now has equipment from Global Foundries directly. So our students can practice on equipment that is in industry. And that's, that's a little bit unique. Yeah, and, and the University of Vermont does not offer a dedicated microelectronic program. So I think for students who are in mechanical engineering, chemistry, electrical engineering, to be able to jump into this technology is, is unique in that regard. So that's not something that students would expect going into a college to have these resources? Not to the level that we have them in our laboratories. Definitely not. OK, and Matt, tell me a little bit about how much this project means um, in terms of workforce development. Well, for workforce development, it's definitely important. You know, so students can leave UVM and go and be productive immediately within the first six months of joining whatever company they go to. Um, but also, they are going to learn about what kind of positions there are in those companies. So they'll be able to navigate their careers better. And they're going to learn about what the different companies do. So they can also tailor their careers based on you know, where they, what kind of company they want to work for. So, and Hopefully, in the end, they'll understand that they can do that kind of work in Vermont. 
Okay, they can work on the latest technologies in Essex Junction, or if they're lucky, they can be down at the Hula Center and uh, stare at the lake. So, <laughs> yeah, great office the, view. Yeah. <laughs> and from the university's perspective, we are, attract a lot of students from out of state. So then if we can educate them and keep them in Vermont, that's good for Vermont. Sure, and you, so you spoke to what that means for the state and how that's benefiting it. How's Global Foundries and UVM working together to make sure students are prepared to enter that workforce? So we're, we established these two certificates um, in semiconductor technology. So they're learning as much as we can. We're trying to show them the different avenues they can take when they go to work at a company like Global Foundries or Marvell if they want to do design. So we're just trying to expose them and train them on you know, the things that they would actually you know, do at those firms. And as part of the certificate, they need to do an internship. So they will have had real experience at a real company as well before they finish the certificate. And of course, this is a newsworthy development for UVM on its own, but could you tell me a little bit how it interacts with the US Department of Commerce designation of Burlington as a tech hub? So th th it's a gallium nitride. Uh, is a new material that has, it's a semiconductor material, just like uh, silicon. We, we you often think about silicon, but gallium nitride is another semiconductor material. And the uh, purpose of that designation as a tech hub is to develop a community of companies that can t manufacture and develop products um, using that material. So um, there's a lot of opportunities with gallium nitride at the moment. Um, so for instance, uh, the high power electronics in your car is all silicon based now. There's a lot of opportunity to make it more efficient with gallium nitride based electronics and also in high speed electronics. So like the next generation cell phones are going to need even higher frequency capability to do 5G. Um, so th these are the kind of things that are still in development um, that, you know, the, the hub is intended to address this, the development of these kind of products. Yeah, and as the ecosystem, the innovation ecosystem develops, they're going to need a workforce. And so as we're trying to grow new companies, attract new companies, the fact that we have this program will be a selling point to them. Oh, Burlington's a great place to settle and to continue to grow our business because we have access to students who are well-trained. All right. Um, and so you said, uh, obviously, we were talking about how Burlington's a tech hub. So what does that mean for UVM? You spoke a little bit about bringing in those opportunities. Are there any other benefits for the school? Well, sure. Anytime a university can be part of an innovation ecosystem, it's fantastic, not only for the research going on, having an avenue to go into application, but also for internships for students and for our faculty to be connected to the state-of-the-art developments in the industry. So it's fantastic for UVM as well as for the state. Yeah, and the, the labs that we've established are really aligned really well to, to start playing a bigger role in this uh, tech hub. I mean, I can see the, the labs getting bigger. I could see more faculty joining the university, um, as well as establishing collaborations with other local colleges and universities. So yeah, it's, it's a really good opportunity for UVM. It's very exciting. <laughs> so Dean Shadler, you work a lot with 4-H um, and a lot of younger Vermonters teaching robotics and different components like that. What do you do with them and why is it so important even if maybe they don't end up going to UVM? So we do a lot of K-12 through outreach, FIRST Robotics, STEM Ambassadors. Uh, we have an Aiken Discover Engineering Day because it's really important to attract K-12 through students to the STEM fields. And when they come to the university or they're, they're at their school and they get to do hands-on work and have fun, then STEM's all of a sudden fun. And then as part of that, we teach them that, can, that STEM can help solve really important problems in the world. You know, how do we have clean water? How do we improve energy efficiency? Uh, how do we improve people's health? But in terms of why UVM does it, I, you know, we're not recruiting fifth graders to UVM, but we are a land-grant institution, and we have a responsibility to the state, not just for the students during their first four years at our university, but all those years beforehand, and for people in the state after they've graduated. So we just feel it's really important to help teach students in the state about the wonders of STEM. It's, uh, it often comes up where I'll ask a student, you know, why did you choose this field? And I'll not, you know, often they'll say, well, I just remember when I was in eighth grade and I had a field trip 
to, you know, we did a project at, a, at the school or 4-H program, and they'll say, ever since that time, I've had it on my brain to study engineering or science or something. Yeah. And also just for the general public, I was on an airplane once and there was a former eighth grader who said, I recognize you, I think I came to one of your programs and I'm not in STEM, I'm in theater, but the fact that I had that experience helps me understand STEM and uh, they also value it even if they don't go into the STEM fields. Sure. So. And so for the viewers at home to understand a little bit more, you mentioned gallium nitride. Can you tell me a little bit about why people use that, why that's new in STEM? So most people are familiar with silicon as a semiconductor, and it's used in all of our computers and digital applications. Um, but there's also a lot of applications that require higher power and also really, really high speed. And silicon doesn't necessarily f do that as well. So gallium nitride is another semiconductor material that is really good at doing high voltages and high currents. So that's gonna be extremely useful for making our EV cars more efficient. Um, and also for doing high speed data communication that's gonna be needed in our next generation cell phones. Um, you know, to develop gallium nitride products, is, it's, a, it's a, a big effort because you need to also, not only do you need to be able to make the, the gallium nitride chip itself, but you need to be able to put it in a package so that it works reliably. Um, you need to be able to test it to, um, w with high voltages, which is not necessarily the kind of electronics that we have in our lab. So we're, we're acquiring that equipment as part of this, uh, this effort so that students can, can actually go and be experienced at, at making these kind of measurements yeah. on this new material. That's great. Thank you both so much for joining me today. Thanks for having us. Absolutely, <laughs> we're happy to have you. <laughs> That's our program for today. Thank you for joining us on Across the Fence. I'm Jolie Whitney, have a good one.